All right, team, let's look at our fourth and final quantum number, the electron spin quantum number, N, M sub S. Now, the first three, N, L, and M sub L, principal quantum number, angular momentum quantum number, and magnetic quantum number, all are associated with a, an orbital. You got the energy level N, the sublevel L, the specific orbital M sub L. But now this one is in the electron, those are electron seats. So the electrons go in those seats. But it turns out this experiment prompted some thought going, well, wow, something was weird about these electrons, which forced us to, not us, but specific people who are not famous, to associate a new quantum number associated with a specific electron. All right. So let's look at the experiment real quick. So 1920, so Stern and Gerlach, right? We're doing some experiments. And what they did is they had a source so they could create, take some silver and vaporize it, right? So you have an oven here and make a beam of silver atoms. Now, we know that silver atoms are neutral, okay? But they found that they interacted with the magnetic field. That wasn't expected, all right? So we got this beam of silver atoms, you know, going all over the place. You know, get a slit so we can get a directed beam. Shoot that beam through a, an external magnet, all right? Well, you'd expect that neutral beam of silver atoms just go straight. Right? Kind of looking like the cathode ray tube almost when you have the electron. Normally, electrons are charged. So when the electrons went through the magnet, they curved. But these are neutral atoms. They shouldn't be curving. And they curved. But not only did they curve, some half went this way and half went that way. They're like, say what? That's not supposed to happen. Because the only way for that to curve is for it to be a charged species, which it's not or it has its own internal magnetic field. What? That wasn't expected. Um, so anyway, they had to think about this for a few years, and some other people proposed uh, some interesting things about an electron people hadn't thought about before. So we got this weird you know, interaction with an external magnetic field. Let's see if we can explain that on the next board. All right, a few half a decade later, 1925, after thinking, 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 how is this even possible for those silver, neutral silver atoms to... To get two beams going through a mag an external magnetic field. Uhlenbeck and Goudschmidt. Mm -hmm. Remember the good hangman words. <laughs> they proposed, in order to explain that experiment, they proposed that an electron actually rotated about its own axis. It spun like a top. Zzz, right? Um, kind of like, in a similar fashion, uh, a planet. Like planet Earth has its own rotation. Right? That's why we got day, night, day, night. As it rotates around the sun, that's why we got, you know, get the seasons, you know, winter and, and summer and all that stuff. So like a planet spinning about its own axis, moving around the sun, an electron spins about its own axis as it moves about the nucleus. That's a pretty simple analogy, right? Even though it doesn't move like a, an actual planet, right? An electron's not a, like a hard sphere, it's spread out and stuff. But what do we know from physics? If you have a spinning charged species like an electron, that induces a magnetic field. Oh, oh. And if we have a spinning electron with its own magnetic field, and you, and so silver contains uh, an electron with a uh, spinning, you know, a spinning electron with its magnetic field, and it has all these different electrons with these spins, as long as those spins don't all cancel out that silver would, even though it's neutral, would go through and be impacted by magnetic field, right? Depending, now, because silver atoms went up and down, that would mean there's two different types of spins, right? Like a clockwise counterclockwise. So a clockwise spin might make the, the silver atom move this way through magnetic field, and the counterclockwise spin would go that way. That seems like a really simple logical explanation, right? So that, that, in, in, that induced magnetic field from the spinning electron interacts with an external magnetic field. Let's look at that a little more intently. Ready? Get that physics. If you've had physics, you can help me with this, right? So electron spin, right? So it's like a top. You can spin it to the right or spin it to the left, clockwise versus counterclockwise. 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 So if we spin it clockwise, right? So it's spinning this direction. We got an electron spinning this way it generates a magnetic field pointing down, right? If we spin it counterclockwise, zing, the other direction, it generates a magnetic field pointing up, right? So these red lines, so the electron's blue, the black is the spinning direction, so we got counterclockwise here, 
clockwise here, counterclockwise there, and the red lines are the magnetic fields created. Well, let's draw the the gen the general direction. If you're into Monty Python, you the general direction, right? So we're gonna go wee. So that's pointing up and from north to south. Wee. That's pointing down. So the general direction of that magnetic field for a clockwise spin is pointing down. The general direction for a counterclockwise spin is pointing up. Of course, we have some terms for that. I'll do this in blue. So if the magnetic field, so if it's spinning clockwise and the magnetic field goes down, remember that right hand rule? Right? So if you spin it this direction, follow your thumb, the magnetic field points up. If it spins this way, it points down. Right. So if it's spinning counterclockwise, your thumb points up. If it's spinning clockwise, your thumb points down. Anybody remember the right hand rule? Right. It's, I don't remember much from physics, but I remember that in twinkle twinkle little square, twinkle twinkle little star power equals I squared R. Something like that. All right. Anyway, so we call this spin down because the magnetic field points down and we call this spin up because the magnetic field points up hey so we have some notations for that and some numbers for that so what we're going to do if we draw it like with an electron we usually it's almost like bowling and stuff we draw you know you know like a spare is a slash and a, and a strike is an x type of stuff sort of like that but we use arrows to generate uh, so it looks like, see the green line? We just draw an arrow to represent that. So if this is our electron, we'd represent it like this. That would be spin up. And then spin down would be an arrow pointing this way. So we're going to use arrows later for our electron configurations to represent an, an electron. And whether it's pointing up or down represents its quantum state, spin up or spin down. Now there are... Um, some uh, numbers they associated with that, right? So this would be, let's do this in this color. This would be M sub S. And this, I'm running out of room here. Right? So we've got a spin up, right? So that's going to be a positive one. And all the other integers, N, L, and M sub L were integers, ones and zeros and threes and fives. But for this electron spin, there it's either positive half or negative half. So spin up, it's positive one half. Spin down is negative one half. There you go, right? Spin up, spin down. And because there's two different spins, if you have a large collection of silver atoms, right, and you're moving them through the magnetic field, and, well, I'm going to talk about this. If you have electrons that are paired up, those spins cancel. But if you have an unpaired electron, its magnetic field is not canceled. And so half the atoms had a, a, an electron with a spin up that went one way, and half the atoms had an electron with a spin down, which went the other direction. So let's do a, a brief introduction into a pairing of electrons and canceling magnetic spin, and we'll be done with this one. This will be a short video. Just remember electron spin. All right, so here's our overall summary of these uh, the experiment and the proposal. So we need now we have a fourth quantum number, right? Three that deal with just orbitals, n, l, and m sub l. One that deals just with the electron, the electron spin. It's gonna come back to haunt us when we do electron configurations later. So if electrons are paired up, but they have opposite spins, their opposite magnetic fields will cancel out. If I have an electron that remains unpaired based on you know, where the electrons go in the orbitals, um, we're going to be setting up some rules in a little bit for how we do that. If an electron remains unpaired, well, its magnetic field is not canceled by another electron. So this would have an inherent magnetic field, which would then interact with an external magnetic field. So silver, when they did the original experiment, must have at least one unpaired electron in order for it to interact with the magnetic field. But if all the electrons were paired up, those atoms going through the, ex the external magnetic field would just go in a straight line. We're going to see terms later um, in the, uh, when we look at the effects of electron configurations. We'll see, you'll hear these terms paramagnetic 
and diamagnetic. So paramagnetic meaning this particular species has at least one unpaired electrons and interacts with an external magnetic field. And diamagnetic means all the electrons are paired up, all the magnetic fields cancel out, so it has a completely different interaction with external magnetic fields. So paramagnetic, diamagnetic. Not important now, you'll hear those terms come back and haunt us in a little while. So the net result is, we, we need to know this, when we get to electron configurations later, when we place, so we'll take a look at an atom and go, how many electrons does it have? What orbitals does it go in? This is going to be critical for us looking at whether electrons get paired up or not paired up. So it's going to have huge impact on the chemistry of that atom and huge impact on the magnetic behavior of that atom and an impact on its preferred chemistry, right? Whether it likes to lose electrons or gain electrons and stuff. That's going to be for a later topic. M sub s, electron spin quantum number, my friends. M sub s equals positive one half spin up or M sub s equals negative one half spin down. Go review your right-hand rule, my friends. <laughs>